Welcome back everybody to a brand new episode of Pine Outdoors. Links to my store, Instagram, and Facebook can be found in the description box below. Yesterday I had a viewer request about how easy is it to clean my machine. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you guys through the process. Okay, so the first thing that I start with, I turn the machines on. Make sure my stirrer motors are off and I go ahead and I set the temperature to 330 degrees on each side on the pot not the base i leave the base on about 320 on both of them this machine takes forever to heat up like i've said in previous videos really it's just a glorified injector it has a really hard time heating stuff up it really excels at maintaining a solid temperature and to be honest that's all you need just make sure that you cook your plastic to the right temperature when you start quick note what we'll do is we're going to wait until this is about maybe 150 to 170 on the pot side then we're gonna bust the top off and then everything just peels out. In the meantime, while that's coming up to temp, I go ahead and get me a couple cups of plastic out. While the plastic's cooking, and while the machines are preheating, go ahead and clean out any molds that I have. We're getting ready for the trout season with hot orange, bubble gum, and chartreuse worms. There's 15 per pack if any of you guys are trout dock owners and you'd like to sell these, uh, I can make you quite a bit of money. Okay, so our temp on our left pot is 180 degrees and this one's at 160. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the top off here. Take this off. There's a pin back here on the back. So now I just pop this loose. It comes out just like that. There's our plug there. I just gently sit this over to the side and this all just peels off. Maybe 20 seconds of clean time for this. Honestly, just a little bit of plastic on there is not gonna hurt whatever you mix. Now, as we're looking down into here, I just reach in here and this pulls out just like that. There is a small film around the inside. See that? If you're really concerned about the film, you can always take a sponge once it gets up to about 250 and just wipe it out and it's real easy to clean. We'll do the same thing for this side. Go ahead and look down in here, same thing. Plug comes out just like that. Now we're here at the bottom of the machine. This machine comes stock with Allen key screws here, but I replaced my screws with some just flathead ones from Home Depot. Makes life a lot easier. Every bait maker is gonna have a butter knife around for mixing the plastic. You can see this right here is the mixing block and it just wipes out real easy. The machine when you buy it comes with this Allen key, really long. Pull the handles out just like that. And that opens up the cavity. Look down in here at the bottom and there's a hole. I just push this through. On same thing on both sides. Anything that's up underneath here will come out of the hole. Just like that. Go ahead and take your block. Put it back on. Go ahead and put the stir motor back on. Both sides. And that will allow the temperature of the pot to get up as close as possible to 300. That's what I always wait for 300 degrees to come or at least close about 270. If I get 270 on each side and put my plastic in, it'll be the right temperature for injecting. And that time our plastic is cooked. So we'll go ahead and pull it out and get it stirred up and mixed. We are currently out of the blue ice. So that's what I'm gonna be making here. One tablespoon of just straight pearl will make it look like the bottom is kind of like an ice cube. This side's nice and liquid, so we'll go ahead and depress this. Fill this side with our plastic and fill our other side up. As you can see, the machine shows 309 and 275. The right side always has problems with being the right temp. The main thing is this machine, and I think it rings true even for injection by hand. If the right side is hotter than the left side, you're okay because usually your back color is okay if it comes over specifically if you're using mostly glitters and clear colors on the right side that's kind of my general rule of thumb so this side here is up to 316 i don't need it to be but probably 320 or so so we'll go ahead and set that there go ahead and turn our stirrer motors on to about 25 or so 
The left side is not gonna need very much. Actually, since we got glitter, let's go to about 50. It'll be a bit noisier for you guys, but it'll be all right. Down here I have my compressor, and right here I have this digital pressure gauge. I try to balance it to five PSI. So we'll make one full turn, another full turn, and then it should hit about 2.5, there it went. Now we're at 4.5 PSI. I'm gonna tap it a little bit because I want five to 5.5. It's at 5.0, I'm gonna go up a little bit more, 5.5. We're gonna burp it. There's our plastic coming out. Go ahead and shoot our molds now. You see we get nice clean laminations every single time. As long as you pay attention to your air pressure, you'll be good to go. I wanted to show you guys something here. These labels that I made. You can scan the little QR code and it takes you straight to the site. There you have it, there's your beautiful 40 calf from Fat Guys Fishing, full of baits just made for packaging and shipping and making some money. If you guys are interested in any of these baits, we keep them in stock. We have lots on the shelf ready to bag. All you gotta do is stop by online at pineoutdoors.store, place you an order. Since I only put 32 fluid ounces into the machine in each side, so that's a half a gallon. On the fifth set of going through these, somewhere between 800 baits and 1,000 is when the machine will run out of plastic. Usually one side will have a little bit more and I have to drain that out. Generally on the third mold that I shoot, I will run out of plastic and right there, you guys can't tell, but there's, I see gas coming out of the machine just like that. So since the plastic has run out, I have a spit cup that I keep right here. We'll go ahead and open it all the way up. It does get pretty smoky. I just make sure to drain the both sides out real good. And you can see, the right side seems to be out, but we have more on the left. So I go to the right side over here with this kill switch thing that I installed. Go ahead and turn it off. You see we have a solid flow. This left side always holds quite a bit more plastic. So where this, where it's good is if you, all right, that's, that's that extra little bit of plastic right there. Go ahead and turn our sides back on. I go ahead and kill the air and uh, turn your stirrer motors off all the way down to zero, power it off, and you're good to go. When I was purchasing this machine, I had some naysayers that were like, oh, that's a terrible idea because you won't be able to change colors quickly and efficiently. Well, you can change very easily. Um, what I do is I pull both the pins, just like in the assembly process, kick both sides back like this and I let them rest. And then I take a big box fan and I have these wires that I have up here, these hangers, and I set my box fan up here and it blows air down here into the pots. And it's basically the same process. One really great thing about this is the machine's already preheated. So once you get the machine down to about 220 or something, then you can peel the pots and it's the same process all over again. You can switch colors all day, no problem. Or if you wanna keep running the same color, instead of, you know, while you're letting your molds cool down in between shots or whatever, you can run over there and throw some more plastic in the microwave and get it cooking. You come over and pop the tops off, pour some more in, and you're ready to go. One thing about the machine, you do have to put down 50%. It's actually like $2,500 you have to put down. Make sure to read the fine print and understand that that's non-refundable. You try to get out of buying the machine just make sure that you're aware of that because that can be a scary situation and don't expect to be getting the machine overnight uh you know i was told one to two months it took me eight months to get mine thank you guys for tuning in thank you so much for taking time out of your day thank you for showing interest in my channel it means a lot i hope you guys were able to glean something from this that's all she wrote we'll catch you guys on the next one thanks for tuning in